question. Do you think you have to be in love with each other before having sex? No, you don't have to do anything. So, no, you don't. I don't believe you have to. Where's my other pillow? Um, hold on a second. I don't think you have to be in love with each other, but I certainly think before having sex, I think it's important to define what it is you're both looking for. Be radically honest with each other. And the hard part is when a man says, I'm looking for a relationship, well, what the fuck does that mean? So let me tell you what a relationship looks like for me to illustrate this. I'm looking for a relationship where we spend three or four days and nights a week together doing shared activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together, teamwork building skills, both in our personal and professional life. Uh, did I say traveling? Um, intimacy, both physical and emotional intimacy that leads to either moving in together or getting married. That's what I want. It's crystal clear. So let's just assume you say, I want a relationship and it means that. And a man says, I want a relationship but he hasn't stated what it means. So in his mind, he's like, well, I want to see her at my beck and call. I want to have sex when we get together. And, you know, I might, you know, I'm just going to, those are the main two things I want. That's a relationship. If you don't define what a relationship is, then how do you know you're right for each other? How do you know you're right for each other? So this is why you guys are so fucking clueless. This is why I say before the, I'm sorry to judge cluelessness, but you are. Before the penis goes inside the vagina, read the book Eight Dates by Drs. John and Julie Gottman. That's what you do before you have sex. You read this fucking book. And I got to tell you, I have women writing me over and over again, telling me how this is making a difference in their life. So don't be naive to this. Because the reality is, is these days we're meeting strangers. Check out this book, Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell. We're meeting strangers. We don't know about their values. We don't know about their lifestyle. We don't know their emotional maturity. So don't focus on love. Focus on getting to know each other. So I'm going to change gears for a second here. And I'm going to share something personal with you all. Y'all, I'm not Southern, but I just felt like saying that. So um, about three months ago, I met a woman. Um, through Instagram. And, um, and then I saw her on a dating app and we exchanged phone numbers. And so she'd been following me on Instagram. We exchanged phone numbers. He, she lived like 12, 13 miles from me here in Los Angeles. And we got on the phone and she had mentioned right up front that she was moving to Utah. So she was actually going to be doing searching in Utah. But we had this mutual interest. We were, she were She's really into spirituality. So she turned me on to two podcasts. Mark Groves podcast. Can someone write down Mark Groves right now in the comments in the chat box? Mark Groves, G-R-O-V-E-S podcast. Also another podcast called Spiritually Hungry. Uh, Michael and Matthew Berg or Monica Berg. My, Michael and Monica Burke, Spiritually Hungry. I love these podcasts. Oh my God. These are brilliant human beings. So much wealth, so much. If you really want to change your life, start listening to them along with me. Check out the links below. Don't forget to subscribe. So she turned me on to these podcasts and then we had these interesting conversations about them. So this was about three months ago. And, and one night I called her up and said, hey, do you want to go out to dinner this weekend just to hang out? I just want some really good company. So we hung out and uh, she's very attractive. And we went out to a nice restaurant, my treat. I just wanted to, I was in a, I was in a generous spoiling mode. And um, we went out to dinner in Santa Monica or West Hollywood, excuse me, off of Santa Monica Boulevard. And, and then afterwards we didn't talk much. And then she reached out to me a week later to tell me that about a man she'd been dating and she wanted some dating advice. So I, I gave it to her because I, you know, we put each other in the friend zone and she was going through a love bomber. This guy love bombed and then he pulled away, love bombed and pulled away. And so we started talking on a regular basis, sometimes a couple times a day. And this has been going on for three months. I'm sharing all this with you is, and we've talked about being in a romantic relationship. First off, she now lives in Utah. And um, I don't think we're a fit for each other, but we really have developed a really good, rich friendship with each other. <clears throat> we talk to each other in the morning, sometimes in the afternoon, sometimes in the evening. She turned me on to an app called Trip, 
T-R-I-P-P. -P. It's a meditation app I can use with my Oculus. Okay, why am I telling all you this? I realized that what my soul yearns for is that person I can talk to, to have those rich conversations, that person that I just enjoy talking with. Now, you know, I don't believe we can build a relationship over the phone, a romantic relationship, because it requires doing social activities, hobbies, mutual interests, spending time with family and friends, traveling together. That's how you build a romantic relationship. But what I realize in this friendship is what the missing piece I've been looking for my entire life. I don't think I've ever been in a relationship with someone where the, the, the friendship is so rich, and but from a, from a sapiosexual perspective, in other words, it's her intellect. She's, she's, uh, she's got a brilliant mind. She's got wisdom. She's a Kabbalist. I mean, she's got a, a breath of, of uniqueness to her. And so I feel like the universe brought her into my life so I can feel what that feels like without all the pressure and the emotional responsibility of a relationship. So why am I sharing this with you? How do you know what an amazing relationship looks like if you've never had an amazing relationship? I don't think I've ever had an amazing relationship. I've had relationships. I was married. But in retrospect, compared to what my heart yearns for, it doesn't even come close to what I'm experiencing with this person right now. Oh, and our little kids play with each other. I mean, she has a little kid personality. I have a little kid personality. We we bump heads with each other. It's actually what I love about her is our little kids get together. So my point in sharing this, many of you ask, why am I still single? It's because I feel like I needed to rewire myself these in past decade and a half. Been going through some Herculean work, um, tons of, you know, the Hoffman process, insight seminars. This was after losing, after losing my quarter million dollar year job, after being hooked on drugs and alcohol, I had to dig myself out of the tunnel and rebuild my life. And I feel like I've been reparenting myself this whole time. And why I share this with you, it doesn't matter whether or not you find the man of your dreams, because the most important thing is the finding the love within yourself. And when Connor passed away, it gave me the opportunity to rewire loving on myself. And now I feel like the universe is just bringing more clues, more clues, more not clues, but evidence that it's, it's literally right around the corner. So I invite you all to keep your eyes wide open and open your heart, be open and receptive to love. And it starts by opening your individual heart. And maybe many of you need to heal those childhood wounds and adult traumas to make, actually make it happen. So thank you for allowing me to share there. I really appreciate it.